Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got Nella Liang, the Undersecretary for the U.S. Treasury on non-bank stable coins. How about a circle IPO? We're going to talk about that. And PolySign, you're going to want to hear every bit of that. And how about this? We're going to take a look at some evidence about Jeg McCaleb selling out the last of his XRP. I've always questioned, was it to the Fed or to the Treasury? Well, you know what? We have a new theory to consider, thanks to Big Skinny. And you're going to want every single bit of that, too, because it could, if it's correct, trigger the Shane Ellis theory. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Dig Perspectives at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here today, one trillion seventy-five billion market cap. We're up one point seven percent. Good morning. It is July 19, twenty twenty-two. Bitcoin twenty-two thousand one hundred plus. Ethereum fifteen hundred plus. Up forty-one point nine percent right now. And at the number seven spot, we have XRP up fifteen point three percent at thirty-six cents. Very quickly, we're going to get through this information. It is something to really behold i tell you and really think about this and shout out to big skinny for inspiring this video today 35 cents on the bottom 37 on the top let's get into it ladies and gentlemen right now this is glint pay right here baby the gold-based alternative to banking and you know what it's also the gold-based alternative to the dollar and the inflation that is crushing the planet right now do not mess around go watch this video i will probably play clips of this video at different times throughout the rest this week because it's so so good so make sure you go check out glint if you haven't done it i'm telling you right now over a hundred thousand customers in no time flat and they are all loving having physically allocated gold in their accounts let's get started here samsung said it's currently working on a new three nanometer mining chip that will be 45 percent more energy efficient the new chips are estimated to have 23% higher performance and are expected to significantly reduce carbon emissions in the mining industry. Stay tuned for more on that one. Nelly Liang, the U.S. Treasury Department's Undersecretary for Domestic Finance, says non-banks deserve a path to become government-approved stablecoin issuers. And this gets interesting because we know that Circle and USD Coin have been jockeying to do exactly that and to put themselves in a position to serve as the official U.S. digital dollar. Even though it hasn't been crowned that, I do believe the stage is set. Dante Desparte, the leader of Circle's government work, uh, on July 18th published a set of 19 principles for stablecoin regulation as a part of the company's efforts to shape the U.S. stablecoin policy. And they have met with people from the Fed, the Treasury, and other parts of Congress. They are, I'm telling you, far and away, it's not USD tether, this much I can tell you. And with all of that happening, Circle CFO says company expects to public listing by Q4. Things are moving quickly, ladies and gentlemen, and it will be a SPAC deal. So keep an eye out for more on that front. And I tell you, in Q4, that should be some fireworks, because I would imagine if UST Tether is going to get called to carpet, it may happen before then. Looking right here, Arthur Brito, co-founder of Ripple and designer of XRP Ledger, still building. This is Jack McDonald from Standard Custody and PolySign. Nice interview, Tony Edwards. And uh, take a listen. I, I got a question for you. I don't, I don't know if you can answer this one because, it, once again, it's proprietary. Your blockchain is You can right. try me. I'll tell you if I can or can't. <laughs> I, I would love to know what protocol um, these blockchains use. Um, uh, being that they're private, uh, is there any type of like proof of stake? You know, there's all kinds of protocols out there with different blockchains. Is there any native protocol to to the internal blockchain or the private blockchain you're using? Yeah, I'd rather not not say in this you know form to get to get back into it. But I think Arthur, you know, from day one has a uh, a view towards uh, really being best of breed and being forward thinking in terms of the types of you know, technologies he designs and also to be very um, open in terms of uh, a desire to collaborate and, and really to you know, democratize technology around the world and to, you know, to be a, um, a beneficial 
partner in terms of building out this whole ecosystem. He's, he's um, I think, very generous in terms of how he thinks about that. We look at the XRP ledger built on open source and this Polynet authoritative blockchain, you know, may start private, evolve into hybrid, and ultimately will, uh, we think, one day evolve into a public chain. And so we always have that kind of mindset in terms of how we want to work with the industry to be a builder. I think in the end of the day, what we're all doing, Tony is trying to rewrite a new operating system for, for capital markets and payments globally. And so we're not uh, of the school that we want to have everything come onto our chain. We want to kind of create this closed loop system. Uh, quite the contrary. We want to be a participant in building a very open and flat network there. I mean, you know, all of that, I'm, I'm speculating on that and many other things I've seen from PolySign in the early days is that, you know, I, I have often speculated that PolySign is the new digital version of DTCC. Now, I could be wrong about that, but that's how I've always understood it. Just like I've always understood that RippleNet, to me, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe is a new digital version of what Swift is currently, right? But obviously even better because they do more than just messaging is what Swift does, right? They do messaging, instant settlement, payments, provide liquidity and the rest of it. So we all know it's just a better version all the way around. So that's how I see this until we find out differently. Now, let's talk about this because, you know, Ripple shared even what a big deal it was that Jed McCaleb's taco stand wallet that has sold more, well, 9 billion XRP since 2012 or 2013 in that time frame. Now, what's interesting is, is that they highlight what a special moment it is too. And that inspired Big Skinny to call me and say, you know, I know you've had this idea that maybe Jed McCaleb has, you know, been selling his stash to the Fed or the Treasury, and maybe that's the case, but maybe we should also consider something else. And then we started down the rabbit hole of hashing it out, and it is worth speculating. And the thing I love about having this channel and access to all of you isn't to hype you. It isn't to alarm you. It's to inspire you to take these things that we speculate on because we are speculators in an emerging asset class and see what your thoughts are on it too. Can we dismiss it? Can someone else bring something to it that gives it more validity for consideration? All of these things matter, and it is a collective effort. So as we listen to this uh, idea of what maybe is taking place or has taken place, maybe we could get your thoughts on this, and maybe it could inspire the conversation to go further, or maybe it could put the conversation to bed. But what we saw this past week was Jed McCaleb sold the last of his XRP in the taco stand wallet. It was originally owned 9 billion units of XRP in 2012 when the XRP ledger was created. Now, through all of this agreement, basically, and I want to bring you down here, uh, after Jed's departure from the company, Jed sold XRP into the market with regularity from 2013 through this past weekend. Ultimately, an agreement in 2016 outlined all of Jed and his children's remaining XRP, approximately 5.3 billion, would be placed in escrow with the XRP released in a manner consistent with the settlement agreement. Jed was allowed to sell his remaining XRP based on the daily volume in XRP markets. Jed was required to donate 2 billion XRP to charity, donor advised fund of his choice. Jed also agreed to sell all of his shares in Ripple, the company. So, despite all the drama, developers, entrepreneurs, independent Ripple have continued to build on the XRP ledger, taking advantage of its native attributes and unique functionalities to move value. Today, the XRP ledger supports hundreds of use cases from cross-border payments and custody to marketplaces and NFTs. Ripple has been in business for 10 years, and this is only the beginning. We continue to be inspired by and are in awe of the XRP community and look forward to the continuing build a new future together. Now, what I want to remind you guys of is this, which is a part of our conversation. In 2019, in the 2019 Q4 report, what did we learn back in 2019? We learned Rimple dumped zero XRP onto the crypto exchanges in Q4 2019. Right there is a the number. Programmatic sales, zero. Programmatic sales, if I've come to under, as I've come to understand it, is sales to the secondary market, which is the exchanges we buy from. 
So that is what Ripple made clear. They continued to reduce its sales in Q4 2019, totaling zero for programmatic sales. Now, obviously, institutional OTC direct sales continued for obvious reasons. But then we have Q2 2020. The Q2 2020 report taught us this is that we learn Ripple buying back XRP from the secondary market really means for assets long-term future. Now, what's interesting about Ripple announcing that they were buying back is at that time, I was understanding that Ripple was really declaring that we are a customer and use XRP as a customer just the way anyone else does out here as a market maker, right? And that was very interesting to me to learn that. So Ripple had stopped programmatic sales in 2019 and obviously beyond because they did say that they they said other places as well that they stopped programmatic sales and haven't done it since 2019. It's always make me wonder where does the exchanges get the XRP from if they stop programmatic sales to the secondary market? And then Ripple also announced in Q2 that they buy it back from there. Well, the question is now is what if Jed McCaleb was not selling to the Fed, not selling to the Treasury or anyone else, but in fact has been selling to the secondary market and the exchanges themselves. And Ripple would have no need to do so because Jed had so many to sell. This would keep them from flooding the secondary market and still provide an open line of XRP to run to the exchanges for retail. Obviously, ODL for, uh, platforms that participate would probably get it from OTC, from Ripple. Now, what's interesting about that is, is Ripple also said that they performed buyback in Q2 of 2020. What if the secondary exchanges have been buying the, the liquid, liquid feed of XRP from Jed's Taco Stand wallet? And knowing that Ripple has been buying XRP off the secondary market as well. This could possibly mean that what we've just witnessed, if, if this were to be accurate, what we've just witnessed is the secondary market just stopped getting XRP. And the only remaining XRP, if this is accurate, is what's liquid out here floating around. And what would happen once that dawns on everyone out here, if this is accurate, that the liquidity that is out here on the secondary market came from Jed's taco stand wallet, and now the well has run dry. How long will it take to soak up the liquidity if this is accurate? And what would the price be once it is? Then it makes me think of Shane Ellis' theory, where how the stair step of volume and price could take place. Now, it's not exactly as Shane Ellis paints that theory, but it certainly allows for a stair step in price to take place. Once it dawns on everyone, it, should this be accurate? We are speculating. If this is accurate, it would make one wonder how fast the price would go up. And it's certainly, I would imagine, stair step to a point. $5 and 25 who knows, right? Then you're going to have sell-off points and all of this. And the most important thing about all of this that lines up with the Shane Ellis theory is that retail keeps buying each other out. The banks don't have to buy you out. Retail keeps buying each other out. And if we were to get a decision in this court case, that's a split decision where the SEC can claim a victory, but so can Ripple. It just may be that the sales are turned away from retail and only allowed to happen from accredited investor status or higher. And if that were to happen, the XRP that floats around here on these secondary exchanges is about to be worth a lot more than 36 cents today. But it is a theory. It's not a fact. But I think it's one worth sharing. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below and share with somebody you know. Check out all the links underneath the video. They're products and services I use each and every day. And I tell you, they're great specials and deals, but you got to click the links to get them. Not financial advice from me, Big Skinny, or anyone else. Just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.